This lesson is going to be about modeling with differential equations. And before I start this lesson, just want to say that a differential equation that we're going to be looking at is going to be something in the form y prime equals f of xy, where this is a function of x and y. There are more complicated differential equations, but we're just going to be looking at these types for now. One of the first differential equations we'll be looking at is something in the form y prime equals k times y, where k is a constant. Now we can solve for y if we replace y prime with dy over dx, and let that equal ky, then we can do a little bit of algebra, dy over y equals k times dx. From here, we can integrate both sides. So we have that the ln of y is equal to kx plus c. And then we can put this explicitly for y and have y equal e to the power of kx plus c. And what a lot of people do, instead of keeping the plus c up here, they'll say that this is equivalent to saying e to the kx times e to the power of c. And e to the power of some constant is just another constant. So in fact, what you can do is just replace it with c times e to the power of kx. And then sometimes, with the differential equation, you'll also be given an initial value, usually something like y at 0. They'll tell you that it's some value i say, and then you can use this initial value to plug in and solve for c. The differential equation that I just explained can be used to model things like growth and decay. Imagine that we have a population of, let's just say, bunnies. Our rate of growth of the population is going to be proportional to the number of current bunnies in the population. The reason for this is because the more bunnies you have in the population currently, the more they'll reproduce and create more bunnies. So that means that we have the rate of growth of a population, if we let y represent the population, then that'll be proportional to the number of current animals in the population. And that's exactly the differential equation that we had earlier. And so if we recall the solution to that, y equals c times e to the power of kx, where x usually represents the amount of time passed, and c represents the value of y at x equals 0, or at the beginning of time. So if we were talking about a population, then we could write out the model population at any given point in time is equal to the initial population times e to the power of kt, where t is the amount of time that's passed. Often with these models, we want to know how long it takes a population to double. So what we can do is for p of t, we'll write 2 times the initial population have the initial population, e to the kt, then it doesn't matter what our initial population is because that'll cancel out. And then we're left with the ln of 2 is equal to kt. So the time it takes the population to double, I'll just denote that as t double, is equal to the ln of 2 over kt. We have something really similar for our decay model, except that in our decay model, our k value is going to be negative. So that gives us a solution of y equals c times e to the power of negative kx. Often decay is used to model things like radioactive decay. And so you could have something like the mass is equal to the mass in the beginning times e to the power of negative kt. And with decay, instead of talking about the time it takes to double, we often talk about a half-life. So if we wanted to find that, then we could plug in one-half times our initial mass 
and solving, we would get that ln of 1 half is equal to negative k times t. The ln of 1 half is equal to the negative ln of 2. And so we have that the t half life is equal to ln of 2 over k.